Now that is just a kind of one dimensional picture of the situation. What happens when you have uh, two dimensions, when you have a, a, a beach? So here is a, here's a shoreline, right? And so what would happen as the wave came towards, towards the, um, the shoreline? <coughs> well, I'm going to give you a reminder now <coughs> about geometric optics. Okay. Because that's all it is. We're talking about refraction now. We're talking about um, waves in a varying medium. And the variation of the medium is the depth of the water. Right? The depth of the water controls the speed of propagation. So what happens when you have a, a wave that travels at different speeds in different media? Well, what you all did at school is uh, light. right? So let's say that this is air. And this is glass, right? And um, so here's the normal, right? And let's say you have a ray of light arriving like this, right? At some sort of angle to the glass, right? Some angle here. What's it going to do? Right, does everybody agree that it does this? Yeah? Does anybody know why it does that? Do you remember? Or did they ever teach you that in school? Why would it, why would it bend towards the, the uh, normal? What's happening to the ray of light? We well, assume it's monochromatic light, so only one frequency. Okay. So let's say it's sodium light or something, an orange beam. right? So the frequency is not changing. There's only one frequency. So what's changing? It's going slower. In the glass, right? It goes fast in the air, slow in the glass. So let's draw some wave fronts. Right. So what's got to happen is that it's got to shorten its wavelength. If it's going to change its wavelength, uh, it's going to have to change its direction as well, right? But unless you want to destroy wave crests, we can't do that. We've got to keep the same frequency. So the only way to make these waves all bunch up together is to do this kind of thing. And so there you go. Now you have wave fronts closer together at the same frequency, going slower, going slower in the glass, right? And so that's why it bends. But that's a sudden transition. It's a sudden transition between air and glass, right? What we have at the beach is a smooth transition, right? So now let me think of this. Think of this as deeper. I say deeper because it's not, I don't want to confuse you and say it's deep water. It's shallow water, but it's less shallow than this shallow water. So it's shallower here, right? So we're in shallow water everywhere, but it's getting shallower and shallower as we go. And so you could, well, let's draw the, the water ray in in yellow so if this was not a sharp shelf if it was a sharp shelf break at the beach in the in the topography in the depth of the of the bottom you'd see something like that right but if you have just a slope then it's going to be something gradual like that right as it gradually gets shallower and then here's the shoreline right and it, so it, if the wave comes in at an angle to the shore, refraction will naturally make it curve so it comes in perpendicular to the beach. Usually you see when you're standing at the beach, you see the waves come straight towards you, don't you? You don't see them going sideways across the beach. Well, sometimes you do, but it's a bit complicated if, if there's complicated structure. But if it's a simple beach, the waves will come straight towards you. That doesn't mean that they came from far away directly in the direction you're facing doesn't matter which way the beach is facing, the waves are coming towards you, right? That's because as they have approached the beach, they have aligned themselves so that they are coming in towards the beach. And that, that is illustrated here, right? So you have one wave crest here. Its next position is here. It's turning around a bit as we, as we change the depth of the, of the water. Okay, and, and you can write down Snell's Law. 
for refraction, sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 is the ratio of the two speeds, which can be written gh1 over root gh2. Still a fairly simple case. We're still just a, we've just got a, we've got a two-dimensional beach, but the topography, so the bathymetry, is still one-dimensional. It's, it's getting deeper um, the same way, regardless of your horizontal position. Let's make the bathymetry a bit more complicated now. Okay, so what happens if you've got two-dimensional bathymetry? Well, you'll have, if you can think of these lines as being wave fronts and these lines as being rays, then uh, basically what, what happens with refraction, and this is a general thing, is that the waves will be attracted towards areas where they're traveling slower. Okay, so high refractive index means slow waves, and the waves will be turned towards high refractive index, so turned towards where they're going slowest. And so the highest refractive index here is at a given distance from the shore will be in front of these capes here, where the water is relatively shallow compared to what it is here. Right? So these rays will be turned in towards these prominences. They will diverge on the bay and we will converge on the capes. So what is the consequence of that for the height of the waves? So we can now apply the same energy conservation principle that we had before, right? And we can say that instead of just talking about wavelengths, we can talk about a surface area. So you can imagine a surface area, a box, which is marked out by two successive wave crests and on the sides two <coughs> rays, right? So in that box, it will conserve its energy. As it goes towards the cape, it gets smaller, right? So to compensate, A squared must get bigger here, right? And well, it probably gets smaller here as well, because the, the, um, the effect of wave shortening will probably be more important than the divergence effect. But definitely here, it, the waves will shorten and also the rays will converge. So you have A squared times S, which is the surface area, is going to be such that A squared has to get bigger. And so you'll get the biggest waves in front of the capes. Now, this effect can also be seen in, in the deep uh, ocean. Um, it's not because of the depth of the ocean, right? Uh, we're now with deep water waves. But you, there is a situation where you can have that kind of refraction effect which will cause convergence of, uh, of rays. And that is, here's South Africa, right? Here's the Agulhas Current, which comes down the coast here and then switches around into the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. And, and very often, they have big storms in the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. And so they can set off this swell, which comes towards um, the north. And so if you have a wave field coming towards a current, right? And if this current is intensified in the middle, then the waves will be slowed down because they're propagating against a current. So effectively, their wavelength will shorten, right? And they'll sh it'll shorten most in the center of the current. And this will cause the rays to converge. And then again, because of this conservation of energy principle, you'll have big waves here where the rays have converged. So that's a, that's a situation where you can get very big waves. And it's not because of, um, it's not because of this effect of, of shallowing water. It's because of um, relative speed of the waves against the current flow.